Mother Nature and Father Time have taken a toll on the exterior of the Jamestown Windmill, but its centuries-old history stands strong. The mill is actually built on property that was confiscated by the state after the American Revolution. Constructed here in 1787, it has not moved from this spot since. Now the Jamestown Historical Society is leading the project to replace and repair the wind shaft and sails that once helped the mill produce power. Rosemary Enright is the treasurer. It is an expensive adventure. But the cost of failing to preserve the past could be even greater. One of the things that it brings to mind and reminds Jamestowners and, and our visitors of is that this was an agricultural island. In 1865, there were 348 people living on this island, and they were all in some way or another connected to farming. Back then, the mill was used to convert a popular crop into an edible staple for both people and livestock. Most of the corn ground here would be white flint, which is very, very hard. All three floors inside the mill were used in the grinding process, which culminated between two stones on the ground level that weighed a combined 9,000 pounds. They'd put the corn in the vat, it would be jiggled down into the center of the stone and as they went around they would be cutting and flattening it out and, and turning it into cornmeal or cracked grain. One miller ran the entire operation on his own, but after a hundred years more efficient methods were developed. It became useless in the economy. But the decision to preserve the mill was ahead of its time. It was preserved in its entirety. 1904 is really rather early to even think of preservation. Now, every other year, Jamestown celebrates Windmill Day and runs the sales for the town's fifth graders. In the alternating year, Jamestown marks Battery Day, a reenactment of a Revolutionary War battle at the Connecticut Battery. People get an opportunity to see what the life of the soldiers was like. Lawrence McDonald plays Captain Christopher Cole, one of the original Continental soldiers. This is a bayonet, about 14 inches long. It was the most powerful weapon on the battlefield. Take it in, snap it in, ready to go. The British were very good with these. We got better. Local militia forces built the battery in 1776 after a raid by the British to try to prevent another. But it didn't work. The British captured the fort, occupied it for three years, and rebuilt it. This is a 225-year-old lady, and she's showing her signs of age. It would have probably been about four feet higher. McDonald, a Vietnam vet, knows how vital it is to share stories of the past to inform the future. I think it's important that we continue to teach them the history, the, what it really did cost people to have the freedoms we have today. But freedom wasn't available to all. The Rhode Island Slave History Medallion Project is designed to raise awareness by marking sites connected to the history of slavery in Rhode Island. By scanning the QR code with your phone, this one here at East Ferry Wharf, you can learn about the role of slavery in Jamestown. Historic New England wants to honor all of the people who worked the land and in the case of Watson Farm and so many other places in New England, there were enslaved people here. Watson Farm was established on land once home to members of the Narragansett tribe. After the farm's founding in 1796, 265 acres were cared for by generations of workers, some of them forced into servitude. Not only were enslaved people working on this farm and instrumental in the success of this place, they were also supplying markets for enslaved people in the West Indies. So the whole economy was tied up with that. Acknowledging the farm's entire past is crucial to site manager Jane Hennedy and Historic New England, the nonprofit that's run the farm since 1979. Today, the farm is a living history. 
Watson Farm is a, a rare survival, a 17th century farm that still operates much in the same way that it did then. Currently in charge of cultivating the land and animals here is farmer Max Sherman. We start up around 5.30, 6 in the morning and then 7 o'clock the crew comes in and we're doing the chores by rotating the animals, setting up for the next day and then working down the hit list. It's an everyday thing, 365 days a year. Sherman also carries on the farm's pastoral tradition by using a sustainable, rotational grazing system. The sheep get rotated every single day with temporary fencing onto a new piece of grass, fresh water and trace minerals. The cows get rotated every day onto a new paddock of grass. And just beyond these fields is Narragansett Bay. When you work this hard, it helps to have this view. Every day, I just, you know, pinch myself. It's an unbelievable gift. Watson Farms walking trails are open to the public. The walk to Narragansett Bay and back is a distance of about two and a half miles. And back to Jamestown Windmill. The restoration project is officially complete now. For the first time in several years, there will be a windmill day on July 23rd when the sales once again power the windmill for a day.